All righty, we're glad you're here. Let me welcome you to the world headquarters of the D.V. Herring Ministries. Actually, this is South Valley Baptist Church. We're glad you're here. And uh, just thankful that you're tuning in, grateful for the technology that God's given us to do this. And uh, while we're doing this, um, you can comment on the, uh, on the link there. Uh, if you have any prayer requests you want us to pray about, if you'll do that, just type it in and uh, let us know you're watching and then type in any prayer requests you might have and we'll certainly pray for those. I do have one that I want you to remember. Uh, my nephew, Zach Philiber, lives in Cartersville, Georgia, and uh, Zach came down with the flu last week and uh, hasn't gotten better. In fact, uh, he got pneumonia and so they've taken him to the hospital and uh, they've quarantined him off. They've done the coronavirus test on him. I spoke with him a little while ago and um, had prayer with him. And uh, so they're not sure yet until the test results come, come back. Zach's a, a young man in his early 30s and uh, just, just a precious guy. Has a lot of faith for the Lord, a lot of heart for God. And as a remember, remember to keep him in your prayers, if you will. And then... You know, there's obviously, we want to pray for our senior saints. The Lord would bless them. All of our church members, uh, keep them in your prayers, our church family, if you will. Pray for our president as he deals with a very difficult time, Vice President Pence. Uh, pray for Mayor Steer, uh, and we're grateful for uh, the leadership of these men uh, in our nation and in our community. Pray for our governor, and uh, let's just ask God to lead and guide and direct uh, all of them, if you will. Um, use this time to minister to other people, strangers and your neighbor and people at the store. Um, use it as a time to where uh, you're able to encourage people. Uh, if there's any way that you can help them out, then do so. And uh, so let's make sure that we're able to do that and, and be an encouragement to other people. We're going to send an email out tonight, and uh, in that email... Uh, we'll offer to come by anybody's house that does not have access uh, to our live stream and uh, doesn't have the ability or the know-how on their computer to get hooked up with it. And so we'll, uh, we'll do that. And so if you, if you know of anybody that may need that set up for them, then um, we'll be glad to come by and do that, myself or Chad and Nathan, and uh, we'll get the live stream set up so that they can participate and be a part of our services. Um, also, uh, any of our senior saints, guys, I hope you'll really uh, allow us the opportunity to be a blessing to you. Any of you that may need um, errands run, you may need us to go to the grocery store, um, whatever we can do for you. It is no sense in you taking a chance and getting out into the community. Uh, if you'll allow us to do that, we'll be happy. And if you'll post on, on our web our web page there or, or our uh, Facebook page uh, to our church, if you'll post there what needs you have, we'll do our very best to, to fill them. I know Costco <clears throat> today got a supply of some essentials in, and, and uh, so we'll be glad to, to, to do the errand running for you. And uh, so let us do that, and uh, we'll, we'll be uh, glad to be a blessing to you. These are difficult days, and uh, nobody wants to cancel church uh, any less than I do. I want to tell you that. It's a hard decision. But all over the nation, I've been talking to pastor friends, some in very large, uh, what we would term mega churches, some in small churches, and uh, they've all had to come to the same decision. This is just a different time. It's a difficult time. And, uh, and so we're trying to navigate this the best we can. I've gotten so many encouraging text, uh, messages, phone calls from you uh, letting me know that you're in support of this decision. And it's really for the best of our family right now, our church family. And uh, we're trying to keep everybody safe. Uh, and so uh, we'll just do this and uh, get through this together. And then look forward to what God's going to do. I'm going to tell you, God's going to teach us some things uh, through this time. And that's what I want to talk with you about tonight. If you've got your Bible, uh, if you will, go to the book of 1 Peter in chapter number 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. 
And I'm going to read a handful of verses here, and then we're going to take it and, and make, make some uh, comments on this and about, about how we as believers go through trials in our life. So 1 Peter chapter number 1, I'm going to begin reading in verse number 5. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says, speaking of us, who are kept by the power of of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. And so, first verse says we're saved and we're secured in Christ, and yet in this life there are times that bring heaviness to us, and those heaviness come through temptations. Look at verse 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Let's take a moment and pray together. Could we do that? Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for the joy and the privilege of being the pastor of South Valley Baptist Church. I thank you for the encouragement uh, that my church family is. And I'm grateful, Lord, that even in the midst of this difficult time in, in our nation and in our world, that uh, we have the technology and the ability to, uh, to, to worship together and to communicate with each other. And Lord, we give you praise for that. I pray that during this time, a Bible study, when we're not gathered together, when we're not all here fellowshipping, that you will knit us together through your word. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would, would be present in every home, in every place where uh, folks are listening to this, members and friends alike, Lord, that you would, you would open your word to us tonight and give us some things that will help us, Lord, and we'll give you the praise for it all. We love you. We thank you for being with us. Lord, in, in all of our difficult times, in all of our good times, you're always there. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen. I'll never forget in, in uh, 1981, there was a, a tragic story that basically gripped our nation. Some of you that are old enough will remember uh, the name Adam Walsh. What a, what a tragic story his was. He was a typical six-year-old just like anyone whose life revolved around baseball and Star Wars and uh, lived with his parents, uh, John and Revy, in Hollywood, Florida. July the 27th of, of that year started out just like any other day. It was, a, it was just another day in their life, and, and uh, yet before the day ended, their entire world would be devastated. Adam was abducted outside of a, a Sears store and and later it became found that Adam had been murdered and a long, extensive search for his killer began. It was a, I don't even know how to describe it. It, it's, it was far more than a trial. It was, it was a devastating time in their life. And the strain was so greatly upon them as they struggled, not only with the death of their son, but the desire to see justice brought to the person that had done this, um, their marriage broke down. In a petition filed in the Indiana, or excuse me, the Indian River County Courthouse, uh, Miss Wall said that her 31-year-old marriage was irretrievably broken and filed for divorce. And yet her husband John insisted that they give it another try, and so they did. Later on the 25th anniversary of their marriage, uh, or, or their son's abduction, um, John talked with Larry King, and this is what he said. He, he said, we were absolutely devastated, heartbroken. We had nothing in common but the anger and the grief that we shared. His wife said, you know, we're destroying ourselves. This is what she said to John. You know, we're destroying ourselves. This is not something that Adam would want. We've forgotten who the real victim is. It's a strange thing that for some reason when people go through deep and dark trials, oftentimes uh, the, the, the thing 
that happens is that marriages break up and friendships end and lives begin to crumble. That's the that's the intent of Satan in all of these things. And and so the 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 scenario that we find in the life of the Walshes is not really uncommon. In fact, the only really uncommon thing in what happened in their life is that they woke up in time and realized what was happening to them and they put their life back together. And so oftentimes when people go through a time of grief or a time of heartache, a difficult trial, they end up splitting apart and going their separate ways. You would think that after such a horrific and hard and difficult time together, a trial um, would bring them together rather than split them apart. You would think that enduring something like that would make them stronger and would bring them closer than ever and bond them like never before. But oftentimes that's not the case with trials. And the reason for that is because Satan is alive and working. Now, I, I want to I just say that to a certain degree in different manners and in, in, uh, in different dynamics in every person's life right now, there are trials probably going on. People are a little bit afraid, and, and I'm going to talk about that this Sunday and uh, about the subject of fear and how God deals with it in his word um, at 11 o'clock on Sunday. But, but, but people are they're facing difficulties, and some of those may be financial. Some of them certainly are health. It could be their own health or the health of a loved one that, that they're struggling with, and, and uh, it's just a hard time. Uh, but it's interesting to note in this scripture that we read and throughout the Bible how temptations and trials seem to go together. I call it the peanut butter and jelly of the Bible. Where you find temptations, you find trials. And where you find a trial, you're going to find temptations that are inherently embedded within that trial. And, and, and so the greater the trial, the greater the temptation. And you can be certain where you find one, you'll find the other. Now let me begin by simply saying this, and that is that Every believer faces trials and temptations. Every child of God goes through trials and temptations. Let me give you some scripture uh, to support that. Job, and we know the trials of Job, don't we? Uh, what, a, what an amazing individual. Job 23.10, Job said, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Some of you right now, or in a difficult trial in your personal life. It, it may have absolutely nothing to do with the coronavirus and what's going on in our, in our world and in our nation. It could be something particular and unique to your life and your situation, but you're in a trial right now. Can I tell you what Job is saying? God knows the trial. He knows the path you're on. He knows what's happening in your life. And when all is said and done, if you'll stay faithful to God, you will come forth as gold. God is refining you through that. Psalm 17, verse 3, David said, Thou hast proved mine heart, thou hast visited me in the night, thou hast tried me, and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. David is saying there, I'm not going, I'm not going to allow this trial to break me down. I'm not going to let... My circumstances get the better of me. Somebody says, you know, under the circumstances, you're doing pretty good. The reality is we shouldn't be ever under the circumstances. God, God is in control. David said, I'm not, I am not going to allow this external pressure uh, to make me fall. Let me tell you that a ship doesn't sink because it's in the water. It sinks because the water's in it. And so we have to be careful during our trials not to let them get inside of who we are. Psalm 66, verse 10, For thou, O God, hast proved me, thou hast tried us as silver is tried. And so God is trying to bring something beautiful out of our life through our trials. And then one other verse in Hebrews eleven seventeen: By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, uh, and he, had, he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. So it was a trial in Abraham's life. And we know how that turned out and what a, what a testimony it was for God. So as we live out our life as Christians, listen, from now on, doesn't matter. My grandkids running all around the church. You know what they've got ahead of them? I'm not trying to be depressive or discouraging, but they're going to face trials. We all do. It's a part of our life. And, 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 and with those trials will come temptations. 
And what the trial does is it spotlights our faith and the temptation spotlights our choices. So um, a trial uh, sometimes comes in the form of external circumstances uh, that test our, our, our finances, maybe our health, our family, our job. So many different ways trials can come in our life. Temptations come within. So a trial is the external thing that presses us and, and that seeks to test our faith. The temptation is internal. It's that, it's that decision-making process. It's, it's how are we going to deal with this? So we have a trial, we have a temptation, uh, and throughout the journey, those things arrive and challenge us, and we, as our, as our faith is tried, we have to make a decision on how we're going to respond. Let me, let me say this then. Every life will face trials and temptations. So, so let, me, let me word it this way. Every temptation is a trial. Every temptation we face in life is, to a certain degree, it's a trial of who we are, how faithful we are to God. And uh, it, let me give you a verse of Scripture. 1 Corinthians ten thirteen, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Now here's the, here's the interesting thing. The exact same root word that, that we get our word in the New Testament temptation from is the exact same word in several places where the word trial is. And so, and so both of those words, trial and temptation, they have a they have a uh, a similar lineage. They both come from that same root word, and uh, God does that uh, to teach us that when we are tempted, we are going through a trial. Now we know, don't we, that God tempts no man, and that is with evil. God never entices a man to do wrong, but 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 in our temptation, there's a trial. When we're tempted, God is watching us, and that temptation becomes a trial of how faithful we are to him, how dedicated we are, how we're going to remain steadfast and committed to God and his word. Uh, and so we need to remember that every temptation is a trial. When you go through a temptation, you're not, you're not there by yourself. L listen, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Everybody has faced whatever it is you're facing. Everybody has had that temptation in their life at one point or another. And so we're not stranded. We're not an island out somewhere by ourselves, you know, abandoned by God and, and, and all by ourselves. No, no, no. God is there with us. And, and, and what God is doing with that trial, uh, that temptation, is he is trying our faith. God's not enticing you to do wrong, but he's using the things around us to make us stronger if we'll remain faithful to him. And when Peter was being tempted... Uh, his faith and his obedience were on trial. And so we know that, that, that Peter faltered and failed, and yet later we understand that through those temptations to deny the Lord, ultimately we can become stronger. And, and so he was tested by the difficult situation he's in. So every temptation that comes in your life, and they're going to come, temptation's not a sin. It's the yielding that is a sin. Remember that. When you're tempted, you have not sinned. Uh, it, is, it is when we yield to the temptation that we fail the test and we cross the boundary into sin. And so, so our, our trial is, is a part of our temptation. Now let me say this third of all, and let me word it this way. Not only is every temptation a trial... But every trial has its temptations. Now, let me explain that. I know that sounds like double speak, but it's not. So when you're tempted, when you're tempted, you're being tried as to whether you'll remain faithful and whether you'll remain obedient to God, the guiding power of his Holy Spirit, and his divine word. So your temptation becomes a trial of your faith and your obedience. But every trial 
also has its temptation. Let me, give you, let me explain to you what I'm talking about. When you're going through a hard time, the, the, the temptation that is inherent in that trial is to, is to quit, is to drop out. I told you in my letter to you that I've had the joy and, and the privilege of talking with pastors around the nation, friends of mine, some young, some older, some my age, some with very large churches, some with smaller churches. And one of the concerns that all of these have in common is, is what Satan can do during this time where everybody's live streaming and you don't have the opportunity to look at people and shake their hands and, and communicate with them. That sort of keeps us glued together. They're a little bit afraid that people are going to drift off. Perhaps right now, Ron Mackey is falling asleep and Ella is having to wake him up. Or maybe Mark Grinstead is sitting in his recliner and uh, he's just not focusing and Beverly's having to wake him up. So those things are fears and so we're, we're concerned about that. And, and, uh, and so this trial, you know what? There could be temptations in this. People can get discouraged. People, people, you know, can, can have a difficult time and the trial could actually be, okay, I'm not at church, so why should I give? I'm not attending, so why be faithful in my finances? And, and I'm not, you know, I don't harp on money, but I'm just simply saying that, that in, in the trial, there arise temptations that could, that could get us out uh, of God's will. Uh, and, and so we, we have to be very careful. Now, think about this. Why is it why is it that people go through a trial, and in the first part of that trial, they do really good? I mean, man, they're, they're, they're solid preacher. I'm not, I, listen, I'm standing firm. I'm standing tall. I'm going to stand for God. But then as time goes on, they begin to break down a little bit. It's because at the beginning, at the beginning, all they're seeing is the trial. But delayed difficulties and delayed hardships, the longer it goes, the harder it gets, and the more temptation arises for us to just give up, just to drop by the wayside and, uh, and not remain faithful to the Lord. Let me give you uh, uh, 1 Peter. Uh, it talks about us being kept by his power. Look in verse 6. Let's go back to our text. and This is interesting. Wherein ye get greatly rejoice... Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through, watch this, manifold temptations. And so we've got, we've got verse 7, it talks about the trial of our faith. So verse 6, manifold temptations. Verse 7, the trial of our faith. What does that mean? The longer we go, the more manifold or multiplied the temptations can become. And they're, they're not only many in number, but they're various uh, in character. And, and it teaches us this. When, when we're going through trials, you're going to be tempted in various ways, more than once. Remember this. When Jesus went to the wilderness, he was tempted of Satan three ways, but not three times. Only three times are recorded in the scripture, but the Bible says that he was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. And so God gives us the three categories in which Jesus was tempted, but he was tempted oftentimes throughout his 40-day sojourn there in, in, uh, in the wilderness. Spurgeon said this, he said, the natural tendency of trouble is not to sanctify, but to induce sin. And so we're, we're able to stand strong. It's sort of like a race. Uh, it's sort of like a race when, you're, when you get going, the obstacle course of the Spartan race. I've been in a couple of those with my boys and and I want to tell you, you know, you get running and all the, everybody's juiced up and you take off and the journey's good and you're crossing the obstacles and going through the pits and climbing the walls and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and the one here, you got to run up a, a, a pretty good steep incline. Uh, the further you go, the tighter you get and the more you see people dropped by the wayside. It's easy to start out good, but it's not always that easy to finish. James 1, 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. It's a great verse. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. I want to tell you, there's a crown of life 
that God's promised to people that do not yield uh, to temptation. And there's some things that we're going to have to endure. Now, you're like me. I like life to go well. I I didn't think this would happen. I never thought I'd be preaching here. Chad's here with me, running the sound equipment. I'm going to give an invitation in a moment and hope he'll make a major decision in his life. He certainly needs it. But uh, we didn't expect this. I mean, here we are. Here we are Wednesday night. There's two of us in this room. We got our cameras set up. You're watching from home. Who saw it? Who, who saw it coming? And I know a couple of months ago we, we couldn't have imagined this, but what's happened, but here we are. And there's some things you've got to endure in life. Now listen to me. If you're the type of Christian where your life always has to be in full enjoyment mode, you're going to have struggle because you get sick, man, you know. You, 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 you got to have a root canal. Um, something happens, your gallbladder says bye-bye, and you're not wanting it to leave, and it's trying to get out and walk out, and you got to have surgery. A lot of you have had that. I've had it. I'm just saying that, listen, there's a great part of life we must endure. Remember this. We're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. We all are as Christians. And and the reality of the matter is, in that scripture, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God the Father. Wherefore, endure such contradiction of sinners against yourself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. So, I'm grateful, aren't you, that Jesus came and endured some things for us. And isn't it a sad thing that we as his children, we who profess to be believers, that we have to have things so set up for us. You know, honestly, man, today somebody on one of the sites was selling a pack of toilet paper and uh, at cost. And, and it was amazing to me how many people got on and just ranted and raved against him for, for selling it. For, he didn't gouge. He put the receipt right there. It, and it, the attitudes of people were so judgmental. And, man, you go to the store uh, and people are, people are angry. Listen, this is a beautiful time, a wonderful time for you and I as Christians to, to model, to evidence the fact that we can endure some things. Why? Because we're, we're, we're children of the king. We know God's got us. We know this is going to get better. We know that in the long run, our home is heaven, and Christ is our Savior, and the Holy Spirit lives in us and goes with us everywhere. Don't get out in the world and act like they're, they're acting. Let's be lights in this time of difficulty and, and be willing. Listen, just don't gripe about it. Just endure. Just endure it. And, and, uh, and, and God will bless you for it. There's a crown of life promised to those that will. Some people become resentful. Some Peter, people become, uh, they, they're bitter. They blame God. They blame others. They blame the president, of course. They blame probably the mayor. They blame everybody for everything that's going on rather than just manning up and, and uh, uh, just taking it on the chin with a smile, and letting people see Jesus in us. I want to tell you, this is no time to be critical and impatient and unfaithful. Just stay true to the Lord, and God will bless you for that. And, and uh, it's, it's very important. The, the, uh, the, the reason uh, the trial uh, sometimes can bring about such bad in us is because it brings dross to the it brings dross to the service. Can I, man, I'm going to tell you, there have been times in my life when I didn't like what surfaced. I mean, something happened. It may be a vehicle breaking down. It could be, a, it could be really something that is not really that major. But I didn't like. I didn't like what surfaced. When you put metal in that fire and it begins to melt it down, it's the dross that rises to the surface and has to be skimmed off so that the pure metal remains. And I want to just tell you, in, in your life and in my life, when we go through the furnace experience, when we have the difficult times in our life, you know what's going to come to the surface first? It's going to be the things that we need to get right, need to get rid of. 
And God wants to purify our hearts and our life. And, and so let's, let's realize, hey, my trials, you know what they do for me? They show me the real me. They let me see who I really am and, uh, and the things that God needs to work on in my life. So let's let the Lord put that song in our heart and stay faithful to him. Last of all, and I'm going to close with this, and that is that, that um, we've, got, we've got our trials and our temptations. They happen, they happen in our life as we, as we live in, Christian, uh, in our Christian journey. It's going to happen. But here's the great thing. God has a corresponding grace for every trial and every temptation. I want to tell you, I've been through some things in my life that on this side of that difficulty, I would have said, there's no way I can survive that. I can't do that. I can't go there and survive. I cannot live through that. And yet, I want to tell you, in every occasion, God had a corresponding grace that helped me. And I'm grateful for that. I'm so, I'm so thankful for it. Let me read for you 1 Peter chapter 4. Let's, let's just jump to chapter 4. Would you do that while you... Got your Bible there open? 1 Peter chapter 4, listen to this. Verse 10. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards, listen to this phrase, of the manifold grace of God. Okay? If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Paul said, don't be shocked when you go through a trial. Now remember what we read earlier in the book of James? We read about manifold temptations. Peter now says God has manifold graces. So for every trial, for every temptation that we face, God's got the equivalent matching grace that will get us through it. I don't know what it is you're going through, but God's got a grace for you. I don't know what your hardship is. I don't know what your difficulty is, but God has a grace for you that will get you through whatever your hardship is, whatever your trial is, whatever your difficulty is. I'm going to pray with you, and then I'm going to just say a, a closing word before we, before we uh, get off live stream. So let's take a moment and just pray. Father, thank you. For every person listening to this Bible study tonight, I pray you'd bless them, Lord God. I pray, I, pray, I pray that you would just give them strength, grace, Lord, the manifold graces uh, that are there for the manifold temptations throughout our life. Lord, I pray that you would wrap these dear friends, these dear family members of, of our church, wrap us all, Lord, in, in the canopy of your wonderful grace Use us during this time to be shining lights in a world of darkness. And God, during these, during these live streams, make yourself known and real to us. Teach us through all of this. Lord, I believe with all my heart we'll, we'll come back and, and be stronger people for it. And, and so I pray now that you'll just bless the word we shared tonight. Bless as we get ready for Sunday service. Have your way and will in all that we say and do, dear Lord. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. One other thing I want to encourage you, and that is that during this time uh, where we're sort of sequestered a little bit, you know, we're not hanging out with each other, stay faithful to the times of our services. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Sunday morning, we'll have no Sunday school. We're having our 11 o'clock service, and we'll go with that. We're going to have special music this Sunday, so I hope that you'll plan on being a part of that. And, um, and, and tune in with us for that. But I also want to encourage you now during this time, spend time with your family. Plan some special things. Hey, listen, you don't have to go to the mall. In fact, probably shouldn't go to the mall. You don't have to go hang out in Costco. It's, it's all right. Uh, you don't have to go shopping. There, Idaho is loaded with outdoors, just spectacular wonder. Take your kids on a hike. Hang out with them. Go to some waterfalls. Enjoy time with your family. And uh, God, God can use this in your life for a special time. Hey, I love you. Thank you for being a part of, of our service tonight. Uh, I look forward to seeing you Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. If you need me in any way or any of our staff, anything we can do for you, 
let us know. Just send us a message and we'll get it to you. Thanks, my friends. God bless you.